The following audio brought to you by TSF Entertainment Podcast may contain graphic descriptions of violence and or audio clips of violence or sexual explicit events. Listener's discretion is advised. TSF Entertainment Podcast fans, it's your boy, the Juggernaut of Souls, and I am back with the family, Retro CG, Really BTV, and Jack of Jordans. What's good, fam? What's going on? What's up? What's going on? I got a glass cup. I'm classy tonight. You heard me? A glass cup. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I got some plastic. I got plastic. <laughs> <laughs> you so silly. James and Black cent. Barrel. Classy tonight. 50 cent, 50 cent from Walmart. <laughs> I got the I got the bonnet of cups. All right, tonight is it? <laughs> not the bonnet of cups. The wow. bonnet of cups. Okay. Well, uh, besides what drinking cups we're drinking out of tonight, <laughs> we're here to talk about Power Book Three: Raising Canaan. Oh, we're going to do our uh, mid-season recap and a, a little bit of a character analysis on some of the characters that we've met so far um so <laughs> what we're five episodes in five episodes and, um, in five yes, episodes sir. in and um i'm really digging uh what they've done with this show i think this is probably uh gonna be one of the best spinoff series that they've done for the power universe uh, one thing i like about it is that uh Five episodes in, we've had something major happen in just about every episode. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I, I can't remember what episode it was. And CP, you probably remember which one it was because it was the one you didn't like, but the one we liked. Uh, I can't remember if it was episode four or three, but uh, I, I saw where a lot of people were saying that, uh, you know, there was a couple of episodes that were kind of slow to them. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. I feel like every episode we've had major things that's kind of happened to push the story forward. What's your thoughts? Uh, I kind of agree with what you said. You know, yeah. At one episode after the next, it's never a backwards, it's forwards. You know, so yeah. I, I agree I agree with exactly what you're saying. Everything is a forward motion. So, yeah, that's on point. That's spot on right there, CG. I think every episode was... Uh, uh, it left you wanting more. I think they, I think like the first one was a hard hitter out the gate, considering the character that Kanan is. You know, you get to know about his mom, considering how she moves. You know, with the with the first breakout fight, and she's like, "Well, we going back. We moving some ass. Here go these batteries." You know, like and you know, up to the next episode, to the next episode. I think like. It just left you wanting to know more about the characters, and especially one of my favorite characters, which we will get into later. But I think it just left you wanting more about the characters, especially a little bit more familiarity with the characters that was already introduced into previous Powers episodes, especially them. So Damn, that, that's I that's what I like that. about it. CP. Well, you know, I think that was episode four. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I guess I agree with them because I episode four. And again, you know, on the scale of what the first three episodes gave us, it just it just didn't give me a lot. But it still is better. Like I said, like I said in the review, it was still better than the whole season of Power 2. So, I mean, it still was a good episode. It just, I, for me, it just, it, I mean, if I had to rank the four, it was just my least favorite. Okay. All right. Um, 
I guess I'll agree with you on that, uh, Jack. Um, with the characters that we've met in um, the original Power series, it's definitely uh, uh, a lingering feeling of wanting to know more because uh, I don't know if anyone came with expectations for those characters. I myself, I really didn't have any other expectations for the character of Kanan other than what I had already uh, been introduced to him as. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Jukebox. So my impression of those characters um, going into the show was that of the same impression I had of them in the regular Power series, which was actually very surprising because it was rather the opposite of what their character profiles were in um, Power. Kanan is totally different. This version of Kanan is totally different than the version that we met uh, throughout Power. Uh, jukebox the same thing so it was very interesting to see that my expectations for those characters were completely different than what they are being shown to be yeah I can see that man like I um, I, I don't want to huh. I don't have my foot in my mouth but I think depending on the continuation of this and considering the character development, that this can go a long way. And depending on how many seasons go, it could possibly be better than the first power, if you ask me. I agree. I, I mean, I don't. I, I, I hate to put it out there because this is where it started from. It's kind of like, how can you disrespect where... I don't want to say disrespect, but how can you take what we got out of power and say that this, is, that this could possibly be better? But mm -hmm. the way that it's heading, I feel as though that it ceases to come that this possibly could be better because of the character development. And it's just so much to learn from everybody, from a lot of characters. Like, it's so much unpacking going on with just what we've seen in the first five episodes. Well, and it's still, like, a lot of unpacking more. It's still, like, it's way more unpacking to do. Well, unlike in book two, book two is, a to me, I consider book two season seven. A power. It's it's a direct spinoff. I mean, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even like it if it was season seven. I wouldn't have liked it either if yeah. it was season seven. But in, in that mindset, it's a spinoff. It's a direct spinoff from mm -hmm. Power. I mean, even sharing some of the same characters. I mean, you could argue the same point here. Yes, we are sharing some of the same characters, but we're only sharing just two versus uh, book two where there's a whole cast of characters that just rolled over from the other show to this show. And the story is kind of continuing through another series. And I guess that's one of my frustrations with book two is that uh, they are trying to develop a story of their own that's not mm -hmm. centered around power. Mm -hmm. But at right. the same time, it's just a spin off from power. Whereas with this show, I can agree to the point that you're making, DJ, is I think it is going to be a good show on its own. It can stand alone on its own outside of the regular Power series. Mm -hmm. If we didn't know anything about Kanan and Jukebox from the other series, this show definitely could stand on its own without our right. knowledge of those characters. And simply because it's, a retell it's not a retelling of a story that we've already seen. It's a completely different story. It's a, a it's a different story arc for the series than mm -hmm. it was in Power. You know, we knew the story of Power and how it ended. And so with book two, yes, they're trying to tell their own story, but they're not blending the the original series well into the spinoff, in my opinion. I mean, because it's the exact same story that they told in Power, just with younger characters. And that's my frustration with book two. Well, it's like a well, this was kind of like a prequel to everything, you know, that like you know, like way before. And you know, we said this a bunch of times on the podcast that we we all experienced the nineties era, you know, at some point, whether it's early, mid, or late, we kinda like all experienced some part of that. So that plays a role in it too. And I think the acting is like way I think the acting is like way better. You know, but I think like every episode leave you something to hang on to to go further into the next episode. Like well, some people say that it's boring. I would like to ask our audience and maybe get some feedback on why they think that it's boring. Well, it kind of goes well, back to what go ahead, CP. No, what I was gonna say was I don't think so I feel like even though we have some of the same characters like Jubox and Fifty, 
mm-hmm. it's different because it's not like the difference with the the problem with power two was there literally was only like a one week difference between where power left off and power to book two or whatever picked up there was no space there there was no time for the characters to grow up there was really no time for them to do anything different with those characters time and right. I think, right and i think that it was, was a too of, big of a time me, jump right i know for me that was a big part of my frustration because what they wanted us to believe was just unrealistic and so exactly. the time like the show for me already started behind the eight ball because you're asking me to, you're asking me to totally twist the reality that this could happen. Like, this just could not have happened. Mm-hmm. Whereas with with book three, you're taking us back. So, yeah, it's 50 and it's jukebox, but it's as we've never seen them. Yeah, so it exactly. doesn't feel the same because we're seeing a softer jukebox. Yeah, she's still hard. She's still jukebox, but she's not that ruthless killer. So we're seeing how she became that person. With 50, the same thing. Like, we're seeing this green wet behind the ears, fucking up everything version of Kanan. That's not the Kanan we met. Right. You know what I mean? Like, honestly, I'm almost at the point now where <laughs> I understand now why Ghost and Tommy was like, yo, we gotta set this nigga up because it's yeah. kind of like, like, what was he doing that, yeah. like, and now I'm starting to think, well, was he fucking up? Was he making bad decisions? Was he putting them in weird positions and that why they came to this conclusion that we got to get rid of his ass? Yo, like, thinking the same thing because I think Kanan was bugging since like a little kid because he make wild decisions now. So as an adult and you getting money now, and he probably making wild decisions there. Yeah, they probably had to get Kanan to fuck up out of there because of all those decisions that he was making. And we see that and actually that's going to speak to a lot of Tasha's character because I, I feel like Tasha was more so the brainchild of wanting to get rid of Kanan because remember she wanted Ghost to kill him. And right. Ghost did not want to kill him because right. of the relationship. And I think because Tommy was so loyal to the family, Tommy would have never been with any idea of getting rid of Kanan in any way, shape, form, or fashion, whether it was sending him to jail or killing him. Tommy would have immediately kind of bucked that idea. So it just kind of it kind of shows how a uh, methodical uh, the characters of uh, Ghost and Tasha was in order to push us forward, we have to get what well, the weight. And so it kind of just speaks to Ghost's character. I know everyone wants to cast Ghost as the villain, but at the end of the day, he did choose not to kill Kanan. I mean, it was fucked up what he did to him, yes. But at the end of the day, out of loyalty for what Kanan had done for them, he did make that choice to not kill him. It's, and, uh, it's better than an alternative. Come here, let me ask you a question real quick. How much older is Kanan than Tommy and Ghost? Like, what's the what's the? I know I know he's older, but what's the? Did they actually say what's the 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 time span or the length of years as far as the difference in years as far as who's how much older? Well, it sounds like they're probably all around about the same age. The difference is, um, and is actually the next point I was getting ready to make is the writing is so much better in book three mm-hmm. than it is been in some seasons of power and some seasons uh, in book two, because the last maybe the last two seasons of power, you know, the writing started to annoy us. I know it definitely started to annoy us because it it's like you're insulting our intelligence like you the, the continuity was just completely all over the place and things that uh were major story arcs that you wanted us to remember kind of got you know casually written off or not better explained or not explained at all or not touched on i think in this case uh they I, I feel like they're around about the same age and the reason why i say this well i take it back I feel like maybe Tasha is probably the youngest out of all of them because they even, uh, Kanan even speaks to that when he gets out. Um, he says, you know, Tasha, you were a little kid when I went in and now you've grown up to be a woman. I think what it is is the story with Kanan starts off with his family. That's an important part of his story. So, you know, you don't really see too many outside characters outside of the family other than, you know, people like Famous and, um, uh, Comancho and um, that have been killed in the detective. I think you know mm-hmm. once that story has been pushed forward, then we uh, we'll get to a point where uh, we'll be introduced to uh, Tommy and Ghost because they all meet in high school. 
you know, Kanan may be a little further. Kanan and Jukebox may be a little bit further along and or, or possibly even out of high school at this point when they meet Ghost and Tommy. But I kind of give or take maybe two or three years, maybe. But I feel like they're around about the same age. I would have thought that it, I would have said Kanan is probably like a senior, you know, and then and they're Tommy, freshmen. and then they're freshmen. Yeah, I agree. You know, because I think like at some point I can't remember what episode or what or, or what season Tommy, uh, not Tommy, um, but Ghost allude to the fact that Kanan is older, but I, they never really said how much older. You know, they wasn't saying like, oh, he's like 10, 15 years older or whatever. When he was like, you know, school, you should the game, what you mean is a little pup and all this and other. I know that's kind of like, that could be like references to, you know, where you at in position as far as being to well, the we streets. Well, we know he's 15, so at the very least, he's a fresh or possibly a sophomore in high school right now. Right. Um, the question is, I feel like Jukebox is older than Kanan. I feel like I feel Jukebox... Jukebox could possibly be maybe uh, a junior, possibly a senior. Um, because they said it, because they kind of said yeah. it like in the beginning, because it was like, it, you too old for that now, or something like that. When she was trying to go to that new school. Yeah. Right. Like yeah we, we know she's at least one year older, at least. At least, yeah. Right. Because they said that uh, when they were at the uh, Lamont's Diner, and, uh, right. you know, Marvin asked her, you know, why she didn't try for the new school when. I was telling what, everybody about how she wanted question. to go to this school. She was like, uh, I'm too old now. So, at the very least, we and we kind of saw that in power because, you know, Jukebox kind of, uh, she kind of ordered Kanan around. You know, she kind of bossed him around a little bit. Uh, but I, I think that was all because Jukebox was more, I think, I don't think it was even an age day. I think, like, at some point, Jukebox going to be way more on it than Kanan. And she got way more power than Kanan because she's a cop. So well, she I, was, she's way more on it now. I mean, granted, all the things that we've seen happen with her right now, as far as streets, streetwise and um, street sense, she's way far ahead in the game than. Oh Kanan yeah, thinking right goes. Now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, now, Kanan, um, Kanan reacts I, off of emotion. He does, right? And he right. doesn't. He doesn't do any fact checking on anything. Yeah. He does. Right, and even that scene that we saw when when they went down to the park and he was selling, you know, the little package that Marvin had gave him. Even from that point, we see she's schooling him. Yep. Yeah. He ain't she, listening, but she's yep. schooling him. I was about to ask you, CP, why you think he not listening? Do you think he's just kind of like one of them things? Like, do you I think th- he just thinks he knows everything? Like, I think. Well, well, the scene in the park, I think he was just scared. I think he was scared. To I, I think he was scared, and he didn't believe her that what she said was going to happen is what was going to happen. Like he when when because with the price that he threw out is the price in the neighborhood, and that's what she told him. She was like, "Listen, that's the neighborhood price. We we with the white folk, they expect to pay more. So this is what you got to do." And I think he was scared to ask for more because he didn't trust that what the information she was giving him was going to work. Yeah, that's, that's what I right. think. But as far as he's just a hothead and he thinks he knows everything, like he really thinks he's got the shit figured out and he don't he know does. shit. He you does. know, he really thinks. So, yeah, go ahead. Because it, it kind of goes back to that. Uh, I think it's the first episode where uh, Raquel comes into his room. It's the night they, they were at the diner and they got shot at. And you remember uh, she was talking to Marvin and Lulu and she was asking them, you know, what's the mathematics for the day? You know, he was kind of ear hustling and, you know, trying to break their code. And so later on that night when they had got home, and you know, she came into his room to check on him for the night or whatever. You know, he started breaking down the code like, Ma, I know what's up. So but I absolutely <laughs> agree that he thinks that he knows everything and doesn't have a clue. Right. And and the writing is doing such a good job showing that uh, his his rationality of things is totally, <laughs> totally not what they are. And because of it, it's making a mess of things. It's making a bigger mess of things than helping his mom. And that's the ironic part about it is all his efforts is to, quote unquote, support and help his mom. But But he burying him. Yes. Right. And he has no and he has no awareness to understand that. That's the Mm -hmm. other part. 
it would even be different if he he's came not even back, trying to right right if he even came back to his mom it was like i'm sorry i make i made things worse for you i really thought that they took your corners i know i fucked up but no when she tried to tell him how bad he fucked up he came back at her like it was and, her fault for not telling him exactly like you're the child i'm the adult like i told you to stay the fuck out of it to begin with nobody asked you for your help but it displays his his character when he gets older, as we saw in previous power seasons. That's just the way that he is. It's just kind of like you just oblivious to like all the shit that's going on or whatever, and you just so one directional. And but it also your direction is your direction. Ghost was able to move so far ahead of him. It was. It also speaks to how Ghost was able to. Uh, pretty much corner him into this trap. It's and because Ghost is you, smarter than him. Yeah. Period. One dimension. Even Jukebox said it. Yep. Because she's like, you let that book smart uh, yep. beat you. And yep. it's very easy to do so. I mean, yeah, it's very easy. It's very easy to do I so. I always say it. Kana is the one Kana is the one that you call when shit pop off. Kana is the one that you he's want more front for center. muscle. He's more suited yeah. for muscle than putting together schemes but we did see him put together some good schemes i mean and even some of the things he was teaching Tariq, and um you know um with the pulling the licks and things like that you know he had good plans but you know it's the execution it's the execution of those plans a vine and stringer bill exactly exactly it's the execution of the plans that kind of you know made a bigger mess than what it needed to have Mm -hmm. been and we're it, it, that's exactly what we're seeing in his development right now in his younger self is that if he just stopped for like two seconds and just think things through or for that matter even just had a conversation with jukebox about it mm-hmm. things probably would have had a different outcome so let me I feel you- like if he would have went and told jukebox what he wanted to do with uh d wiz and um buck 20 on the corners she would have like don't do it exactly marvo back <laughs> so let me exactly. ask you this then let me ask you let me ask you this then so when y'all say that he wasn't really thinking or this and the other do y'all think that marvin plays more of a role in his thought process as far as just lashing out and doing whatever and just reacting off of he off gassed emotion. Him up to do, he gassed him up to do dumb shit. No, I don't agree with that. <laughs> I can't, I can't, you can't put this on Marvin. This, this, this I, doesn't have asking, anything to like, do you think Marvin. he played more of a role into it? I don't think so. Because at this point, you don't see him trying to emulate any of his family. It doesn't seem mm-hmm. like he's trying to follow in the footsteps of any of them. He's trying to carve out his own path. And he's just, I think that's what's hurting him is because he's not looking for guidance from anyone. He's not trying to get guidance from any of his family. He, he's point. being a dumb teenage boy that's going out here with and, and making decisions that are affecting his family. Kind like a reckless abandon. Members. Uh, yeah, I don't put, think he's consciously following in Marvin's footsteps. Like, I don't think he's like, yo, I look up to my yeah, I don't, yeah, uh-uh, yeah, I I don't think it's mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think it's, it's a, like that. Do I think I that think he it's... might have some of Marvin's traits um, inadvertently? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't think point, it's a conscious decision. I don't think it's a full-on following. I think it's just like Marvin is his hype man. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, let's go do this. Because he know his mama is not really allowing him to do stuff. His mama got him kind of like on a leash. Marvin just right, like definitely. take him off the leash. His Mar- Marvin is just like take him off the leash and open the gate. Let him go. Because as far as we know, I think what Marvin said, he jumped off the Porsche like what? 11 or some shit like that? He was like, right. shit, I sold my first you know, whatever. I was at this age or whatever. So Marvin jumped on the Porsche early. But that's 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 where we're at. But that's that's not where it started at because right. the reason why Marvin is kind of interacting with him right now is because he's at, he's been inserted into the family business at this point because he's done already mm-hmm. because I feel like uh, Marvin and Lulu, if not both, one of the two should have stepped in that night when they were at Rock's house and you know he had shot up old boy or whatever you know he was going back and forth with his mom and neither one of them checked him about his stupid decision at that point 
you know, at that point, I expected one of the uncles to pull him to the side and be like, yo, you're fucking up the business. It's kind of similar to the conversation that Lulu had with Marvin last week where he was like, Marvin, you get in your own way. You know, I'm not going to go to jail, get killed because of your stupid, your stupid ass. Right. Yeah. I expected right. one of them to have that conversation with Kanan. Who going to check Rock, uh, though? That's no, what I'm right. saying. Like, nobody go check Rock. I, I, I don't think that any one of them feel as though they can't. That's what I'm saying. Like, no, nobody wants to check Rock. Like, Rock has a major role in this. And nobody really wanted to, to check Rock. Even if they stepped in or whatever, Rock is, she's the money. So you're going to fall behind. You're going to fall in line on what the money says. Even with Marvin being big and tough as he is, he's going to fall in line where the money goes. So now that's the thing. So if Rock didn't feel- really... So with that being said, do you feel like Raquel is making bad decisions that are affecting the family or that's going to affect the family? No, I don't think she's making bad decisions that's going to affect the family. I think she's trying to do, do what she possibly can do in order to protect it most with minimum damage. I think she's doing damage control. I, I agree with she, that. I, I don't think she, I don't think, I, I think, I think Kanan is going to do what he's going to do or whatever. And she's just trying to do damage control on to that as far as that goes until he's ready to jump off the porch. Right now, she knows that he's not ready to jump off the porch. She has no problem getting to the family business, I don't think, at this point. Beforehand, I think she did. But now, she just knows that he's not ready to jump off the porch yet. CP, why do you think she's making decisions that are going to be bad for the family? Because I agree with exactly what Unique said when he said you thinking like a mother. I think that if Kanan, and I'm not saying she killed her son, that's not what I'm saying, but I absolutely feel like that night that Kanan did what he did, mm-hmm. that first, you know, when she, he shot up the corner and killed Buck 20, I feel like that night Kanan should be sent, should have been sent away and Rock should have handled it the way she would have handled it if that had been anybody else in her crew. Facts. The minute, uh, yeah. she, the minute she showed, because what she did was she showed Unique that weakness, and he said that. The and now he's going to exploit her it, because of that weakness, right? The minute she didn't handle it the way anybody else would have handled that situation, or and, handled it where, yeah, I, I get where you're going with that. Yeah, right. I, and, I, I can see and, that. And Kanan even said it. Kanan said, "You should have sent me to go live with, with my grandmother. She lived way out, you know, in the middle of nowhere." Probably most people don't even know where she lived. Like, even if they tried to look for him, they wouldn't have probably been able to find him easily. Not easily. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about in 2021 where you could Google and all of that. We're talking about in the 90s where it might not. I'm not saying they would have never found him, but it would have took them time to find Kanan. And and by that time, she could have resolved what needed to be resolved and handled the situation. But the minute that, you know, again, he said it. He was like, you thinking like a mother. Well, Kanan is the Kanan is the Great result point. of bad decision making. So everything that the family is going through right now, all this that's transpiring is directly a result of his actions. Agreed. If he hadn't have killed Definitely. Buck Twenty, if he hadn't uh, invited that girl over there to the stash house, like mm-hmm. everything that's happening right now, everything that she's doing right now is all his fault. So I feel like if he would not have ever gotten involved in their business we would be seeing a different story told here. So all the consequences, all the, everything that's happening right now, his friend getting killed, everything that's happened right now up into, uh, with the exception of jukebox situation, everything else that's happened right now is a direct result of his actions. Do you think and again, there's kept no it away? awareness. Do you think, well, ahead, you, did you think they didn't keep it away good enough for him to fall into the family business? Kind like, of, do you, Kind of going back to what Tasha was trying to tell Ghost and Ghost uh, perceived thinking that his children weren't going to pay attention, weren't going to recognize what they really did. And I think Raquel lived in a glass uh, house or a bubble herself where, yeah, you know, we selling drugs and we out here doing crimes and running a criminal organization. But I think because I send my child to school every day and I push my child to want to get a better, better education that I'm shielding him from the, um, the real the harsh, life. Right. Yes. The harsh reality. The same mm-hmm. thing with ghosts. Ghosts, if I put on a suit every day and I move my family into a penthouse, they're not going to ever recognize 
how we get this money or how we live our life, and that they want to be a part of it because they you might know, right? Yeah, you might know that because they have such a good life. You think yeah. they have a disinterest in yeah, the family it's, criminal exactly. business, and I'm exposing you to the best. I'm sending you to the best school, so I'm sending you to to school with 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 business owners, and yeah, they might be criminals, but they white collar criminals, like they doing it the legal. You know what I mean? They robbing people right. legally. You know what I mean? Or whatever, and it's like the thought process that I would expose my child to the best of the best and he would still want to be a criminal is just beyond that comprehension. Like you said, Rock doesn't understand it. Nope. Ghost didn't understand it. I mean, I wouldn't understand it either, you know? I mean, Even with so, them trying to hide it from him, like breaking it down to like the 5 percenters language, you know, you still don't feel as though that they at least tried to hide, like they had to have a conversation at some point, it was just like, all right, we go ahead and have a conversation. We just need to hide it and disguise it and then disguise it within the 5% of language. So even with that being done, you still don't feel as though that they never tried to shield him from that? Or well, she was like, trying how do you think that. he caught on to it? She was trying to, to do it? that when she was trying to encourage him to go to that school. Mm-hmm. She, that was her attempt to mask it, remove him from it. He's getting of age right now because up until this point, he hadn't been a 15-year-old boy. So right. up until this point, the, the risk was very minimal. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a little kid. He's this, he's that. So up until this point, you know, the risk of him growing any interest or getting any involvement in the family business was very minimal. Uh, same thing with Ghost and um, Tariq. Yeah. Okay, at this point, he's 15. He's coming of age. And you know what a 15-year-old boy goes through at that time in his life. Even if his family wasn't involved, I'm like I say, his lifestyle was different though because he wasn't really like Ghost wasn't really moving like Rock is moving. He's a club but, owner, but he was still tied to criminal, criminal, criminal things. He was still doing criminal things. Hell, he but it killed. wasn't as obvious as with yeah, Rock and Rock. Them. I mean, yeah, yeah is, because remember, Kanan was the one that told him. Kane well, he had, he had kind of suspected a, that there was something suspected. going on with his family. He just didn't know. Right. You're right. It was Kanan that kind of um, pushed that over the edge or whatever the case may be. But I feel like Rock's attempts to try to get him to go to that school was her way of trying to remove him from the family business without him wanting to uh, go any further in that. But it was the opposite effect. Uh, that right there just made him more intrigued and more attracted to it and to throw the test and say, no, nah, I want to do this. Yeah, he and, threw you know, that test good. And he had his own motives for doing that because, I mean, he told her that 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 night they had that conversation, Mom, what if something happens to you? At this point, he's seen DEF CON get locked up behind all this stuff. Mm-hmm. High Post has gotten killed behind all this stuff. So, you know, in the back of his mind, you know, my you know mom, ends. this is going to happen. Yeah, this is going to happen yeah. to my mom, too. So I think that kind of fueled his hunger for wanting to get involved in the family business to protect his mom, so to speak. And then the shooting at when it was at the diner and making no better. Yes. That made it worse. Mm-hmm. Well, that just ignited it. It, it, yeah. it lit the wick. Yeah. It, it lit the wick in him that night because it, uh, directly after that. And it was yeah, the whole he was like, y'all try to corner. kill my mom? Yeah, it was like, you try to, it was like they try to kill you. And even she said it was like, well, nah, they shot in the air. It was kind of like a warning. It was and... a warning, yeah. yeah. And she told him, and I and I, we got it covered. Like sure. again, mm-hmm. we're, we're we got it covered. Like, yep. he, he... but he wanted to uh, step yeah. outside. Right, he, he wanted to jump off the out, porch but... early. So yep. switching gears just for a tad bit, what what have we learned so far in this story? Other than the fact that Kane is fucking up everything, what else have we learned in this story that's being told? That, Marvin that we didn't expect that we were going to find out this early on. Rock, Rock is yeah. a genius. The criminal genius, I'll give you that. I think she's a criminal genius. I think the way that she's picking off a of symphony's brain and the way she's soaking up the information and the way she's moving, the and way she she's... Uh, yeah, and the way that I think genius is a strong word, but I, I but I think I think like criminal genius, about, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking about in the in the, in the mid '90s, early '90s, like planting Scrappy in the mid '90s would probably be. I'm not sure that it'd be beyond some other people or whatever, but considering how they saw it, the way they saw it, that it might be criminal genius in the '90s, in 2000, 
anything, it's kind of like, yeah, nigga, you the ops. Get the fuck out of here. But <laughs> back then, but back then, it might be genius because well, I don't necessarily think that it was a plan that she thought out more than it was a, it was opportunity. a plan of opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. Because had Kanan not went over there and jumped on Scrappy, had Scrappy not gotten arrested, then she would not have had the ability to execute that plan. But she so took she just, that and she, she just used took advantage it. advantage of our situation. And she used it. But a lot of her people, advantage. especially especially a woman put in her position, wouldn't use that type of thing. Or anybody put in that position wouldn't use that type of thing in order to get in the position of power. And I think that was a power move. I mean, that was one of her power moves. By going to the bodega and moving her stash or whatever, I think that was a power move. I didn't expect going into this except for reading the, the character shit or whatever, that Rock was going to be the woman that she is now. Personally. Well, I think a part of that is motivation because of the fact that she is a woman. Because it kind of goes back to what she told Unique, that she'll never get on her knees for a man. So I think she's having to think things through a little bit more methodically. She's moving a little bit more methodically because Definitely. she's at somewhat of a disadvantage of being a woman. Definitely. And she feels like everyone is not going to take her serious or not going to take her as a serious threat because she's a woman. So I think that kind of forces her to think things through and move a little bit differently than her male counterparts. Um, and to a certain degree, we actually see 50 do a little bit of that in power because isn't this exactly what he did with Sean? This yeah. is exactly what he did with Sean. He had a yeah. move inside of Tommy and Ghost organization. He did it with Dre. You know, he kind of he he kind of did it with intimidation with Dre, and I guess it was to a certain degree intimidation with Sean. Sean was just torn between doing uh, what he felt was right for his father out of obligation. Dre, it was just pure intimidation and um, manipulation and threats that he was kind of using both of them to get in, the inside error, information. But the error is so time. different. The error is so gritty. Like yeah, know, not, like the error is so different. It is a bit different. It's a it's a it's a bit of a twist. It's a bit of a twist and turn in what we expected to see uh with her character. She's not at the mercy of anyone, is what we're seeing in her. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else do you feel like we've seen pretty early on in the season that we didn't think that we would see this early on? I don't know, I guess. The the storyline with um the detective that's I what knew, was mine going to be yep I knew it was a connection but I'm kind of mm, shocked that we're that's getting a good this one. early that's I knew it was a connection from that first episode the way he walked he rolled up and they were familiar with each other like it was an antagonist an antagonistic way but you could definitely tell there was a history mm. yep. and but I I. That it played out this soon. That that they actually made that connection this soon. I agree. I think that uh, that was something you were expecting to see at the end of the season. You talking you know? about in the, you talking about under the lines of him mentioning that Kanan is possibly his son, right? No, not possibly is. Well, <laughs> I think he is. Did we, yeah. did, we did we lose CP? Because I can't hear. It. I guess I so. Know. But yeah, um, I didn't expect to see that so early on in the show. Uh, I expected to see that maybe towards the end of the series or, or maybe uh, I expected to see it uh, at the end of the season. You know, I didn't expect for them to show us that that soon. That so, happened real quick. <laughs> it did happen real quick. You know what? I like, I, I like that it happened... When it happened, honestly, because I feel as though that if this is going to be a, it wasn't even a cliffhanger. That's the crazy part. So it wouldn't be a cliffhanger. Mm -mm. It was well, it kind of technically was a cliffhanger because it's the mid-season finale, but it didn't it didn't end on a cliffhanger. It was like they really put that story together quick. Uh, they kind of broke the timeline down for us and mm. gave us. Uh, all the proof that we needed for confirmation. So after that, it's, it's just it's moving on, moving on from this. I guess my cliffhanger was like, 
nigga Marvin's gonna die or something like that. I guess that was my expectation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I guess that I was think my God was expecting. That. Yeah, I'm saying like it, that, I, I think my expected cliff was different. But what Crystal was saying last week about them, uh, we could have still got this element without the whole bone marrow thing. But mm-hmm. I think the reason why they made that connection so early on is I guess they want to push that. She try to get back in too, and we we lose. I'm back. Can y'all hear me? That, yeah, we hear you. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I'm back in. We're trying okay. to uh, push this about the whole bone marrow and uh, Kanan possibly. So there's your cliffhanger right there because now you have to ask yourself: Yeah, is you Kanan going to be able to be a donor? Is he going to be a match? Is he going to? So that's that's in the back of your mind with that. Kanan might happen. kill that nigga. I, but I'm gonna get it to yeah. that later. Was, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get it to I, that later I was, too. I was kind of, I was kind of thinking that that he might either kill him or this fool might plot something to get Kanan, you know what I'm saying, locked down at an early age. But Rock ain't going, and Rock end up killing him. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna, so, I'm, I'm gonna get it to that later. I'm gonna get it that. I think that's gonna be part <laughs> of my prediction because I, I, I see things. We we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Gadget. Yeah. Uh, another it. thing that um I'm kind of uh shocked that we're getting so early on in is jukebox whole uh sexuality. You know, there wasn't really a big um, I mean it was just it, it was just part of her character in in power. I mean, and we had seen that in with other characters like Lobos and other characters that we saw that in power and, and you know the backstory of their sexuality was never explored uh, explored as much as it is with Jukebox so to see that they led off in the first five episodes with her coming into her sexuality and then you know breaking up with the little girl or you know having it taken away from her so quick I was very surprised that they pushed that story forward so quick and uh, a conclusion to it so fast they you know, I thought this was something that. that was going to play out throughout the series. Yeah, um, they ain't waste no time with that. They ain't waste no time opening and closing that door quick. So, you know, now if if we don't have to never see another scene with Jukebox involved with anyone to know that that was something that uh, affected her for mm-hmm. life. So, um, I, I just, I really like the writing. I really like the writing. The writing is, is, is like we said uh, in our podcast, is they don't dwell on stuff. They don't leave stuff from episode to episode out there lingering. They they pretty much close. Yeah, they don't close drag it out. Really, yeah, they close it up really quickly. They don't drag it all the way through the entire series run. And I really and, like that. And the one thing, and I, I think I've said this before that I like as well is as a viewer, as as what you're doing is you're writing for the fans. Yep. Because mm-hmm. you're not insulting my intelligence. Like you guys are a lot more. Because y'all have watched it over and over again and y'all know a lot more as far as like this happened in this episode. Well, no, he said this and he said that. So for the people like y'all who really know the story of of power, book one, they're not insulting your intelligence by exactly. trying to rewrite stuff. Like it's 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 so far it's fallen in line. Like at no point are we like, nah, we can't believe that. Nah, that wouldn't right. happen. Or you know, it it seems like it's 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 feasible that all of this is going on it goes back to the continuity that uh i had an issue with with power i had an issue with with power and the fact that they started this show off on a timeline if they would have never gave me that 1985 and then 1991 then i would a lot of this stuff wouldn't be in the the forefront of my mind right because you're breaking it down by year Mm -hmm. and i know that uh power ended with you all showing us 1996 I have to think that that's going to come into play at some point in this pre- prequel. So I agree with that. I think the continuity is what is is good. Whoever is writing um, part of this writer's room was actually fans of the previous show, watched the previous show, uh, took notes to the characters that they were going to be writing for because really, to be quite honest with you, they didn't have to pay attention to any of the other story arcs in power. They didn't have to pay attention to any of the other characters in power except for Kanan and Jukebox. So every scene that they were in, every comment that they mentioned about their past is a callback to what we are looking to see in this prequel. So we we're, we have to we have to keep that story telling together <laughs> where you don't start insulting my intelligence and you start rewriting a whole different character mm-hmm. than what you gave me in another show that's supposed to be part of the same universe. 
so. Right. Okay, so speaking of characters, I guess we'll start talking a little bit about our, our favorite characters. Um, so yeah. <laughs> what do you think so far about the, the cast and the, the actors and the actresses and the characters that we're seeing? I think they, they did a great job with casting. They did a wonderful job of casting. I gotta, I gotta find out a little bit more information about them. I will do my research and I will bring that information up to the forefront in our next episode. I gotta do a little bit more research, but um, I, I love the way they cast Jukebox. I, I love the way they yes. cast Jukebox, and the way they, really the way they cast the Kane because he kind of talked like Fifty. I said, Chris, did I not yep. say that to you? Like, yep. I said, the longer, <laughs> I'm like, the, you see the little twist in his, in his mouth to the side? Yeah. He yeah. Yes. Talk like 50. It's like yeah. he yeah. practiced it. But he, but he wasn't doing it at first. It's like he's coming right. into that character. Right. He's, he's, really, a, he's really adapting this character. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Right. And he kind of yeah. talked like 50, and I was just like, yo, is it me? Or is he kind of like talking like 50? Like he and you really, you really notice it when he goes to Saturday school and he's presenting his um uh, project and him and um Symphony talking, you really notice it then. I'm like, oh snap, like he he, he perfected this. Yo, Juggernaut, I, I didn't gonna lie to you. The first time I noticed it is when he was uh cleaning up the dishes with his mom, and I, he thought he was moving up, he was like Shit, word. I'm ready to move up. I'm ready to put the work in. Whatever he said. I'm like, I can't quote him. <laughs> but he was like, I'm ready to put the work in. I was like, yo, this sound like, I was like, yo, this sound like Kanan. Like, uh, he was like, I'm all, uh, I am already know how to uh, cook spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, part. Yeah, I was like, oh, it, yeah. This it, it, I don't remember what scene it was, but I know it was the, the it wasn't like, it was episode four. Because yep. I literally texted you While did. I was watching the episode, I texted um, Retro and was like, the long, I'm like, he is really starting to sound and he's starting to yeah. look like 50 to me. Yes, like, yes. I said that. So I don't know when, it, I don't know what scene it was, but I know what episode it was. Yes, yes, yes. And I like the jukebox casting. I, I think like jukebox casting is like one of my, and this might be only because I'm biased and I know where they're going to lead up to or whatever. I do like Lulu. I think Lulu is probably like one of the coolest, calmest cats on there, I think he I might think be Lulu the most. My favorite. I think he might be the most level-headed character of all of them. You know, well, personally, actually, since we're on uh, since we're on him right now, Lulu definitely is uh is probably going to be a fan favorite. But mm. I, I see him having that inner conflict that Ghost had, where he he's he's involved in the family business out of obligation, but not really want to be there. I mean, I, I think that. Lulu wants to be on the music side. He wants mm -hmm. he shares that same love and um, passion for music that Jukebox is sharing right now. But mm. unfortunately, he 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 couldn't he couldn't he couldn't evolve into that because he had to be involved in the family business. And the fact that Raquel has a higher degree of trust in him, he's kind of like depended on. Yeah. You know, so losing him to the or uh, losing him in the organization will be a big hit for them. Would be a big issue for them. But you really don't see what his purpose or role in the organization is. We know what Marvin's is, and with Lulu, I think with Lulu, he's just kind of Raquel's right hand. And he's a calm collective. He didn't eat it quiet before the storm type. Like he'll put it in work. Like we just seen him put it in work. But I think he's kind of like. He's kind of, he you gotta have a Scotty Pippen if you you know what I'm saying like that's Jordan right there is Rock you gotta have a Scotty Pippen you gotta have Rock is gonna put up forty points and Scotty Pippen needs to just put up twenty five so you right. gotta look, look at it like that you know that's the way I look at it and then you gotta have a cleanup man that's Dennis Rodman and Marvin is a cleanup man he's Dennis Rodman that's the so way I'm is, what, where do you think his character is going to evolve into. I think overall he's going to end up uh, trying to get into the music, but I don't think that the streets are going to let him. I think he wants to, but the streets are not going to let him. He, he like he's he's not going to have too many options. We assume that all these characters die because they don't make it to power, which we but said if, we wasn't going to say. <laughs> we got to. No, no, no. I'm it. not even talking about that part of it. <laughs> okay. 
you know, how many episodes they're in or anything like that. I'm just talking about in general. I mean, we know mm-hmm. anybody who's watched Power know that these characters don't make it into uh, the Power series. So right. my question becomes is we automatically assume that they die, but is there a possibility that they walk away? And right. they start a whole new life or they pick up a, a whole new life. Is there a possibility that Lulu walks away from the family business and becomes this? Uh, yeah. I, and he can. I was never, yeah, I, I 100% feel like some of these characters are still alive. They're just not in power. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I feel like their story ends here and it doesn't go beyond that. I think uh, even with Raquel. There is a possibility, you know, we've had somewhat of a mini debate on whether or not she lives or dies or whatever, but there is a possibility that she may make it out, but just doesn't continue to be in the business. In the game. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And for whatever reason, you know, we also got to remember, too, we're planning backwards. So for whatever reason, they chose not to put, I mean, these are characters that, I mean, I don't know how far ahead they plan this, but. These are characters that may or may not have necessarily been around when we were doing power to this extent for them to bring them onto the show. Like, right. we, we know that there's a reference to 50s mom, but we still debate about whether the reference is she's alive or dead. He said, the, he was like, nah, I went to go visit my mom first. That could mean that he went to a cemetery. It could mean he went to go her, went to her house. Thanks. We never see her, though. Same right. thing with, you know, Lulu. Hell, Marvin could be in jail. That don't mean he did. You know, like, you right, know, so right. all of these characters could still very much, like you said, and honestly, out of all of them, if I was going to say somebody walked away, I could see Lulu being the one that walked away. I could see I that. Could too. I could, too. Lulu is smooth, I think Lulu is the smoothest to do it and to recognize that, like, all right, it's too much. Well, I, I, I feel like think... that's what they're setting this up for with the whole music thing. I feel like that's what they're setting us up for where we could see him walk away from the family business and say, you know, music. And, you mm-hmm. know, and Kanan could harbor some resentment towards those family members that decide to get out of the family business mm-hmm. in lieu of uh, wanting them to stay in the family business. These people, just like ghosts, may choose to want to have a legit life, you know, because right. he, and- said, he said to Marvin, look, I don't want to end up in dead or in jail. Right. So because right. he said and that he's he's mitigating the risk of, you know, if I stay in this, this is what could possibly happen to me. So I could very easily see him walking away at some point. And Vicky could very well be the Tasha and not understand not wanting exactly. to be in the game. Exactly. Exactly. Because and- let's I mean, because again it goes back to what we're seeing right now. He's get, he's been given every opportunity to not do this and he, he finds every opposite. opportunity to do it. Yep. So he it could be the ladder. same mentality of Lulu wanting to walk away, maybe even his mother at some point making a decision to walk away and him not understanding it and not respecting it. Yep. Right. And yeah. I think that's ultimately what drives a wedge between him and Jukebox. Not necessarily a wedge, but maybe distance between the two of them because at some point we know she walks away long enough to become a, a, a cop. cop. Yeah, and why? But I don't think she really walked away. I don't away. think she really walked away. Yeah, to, yeah. I think she just take another angle. To, I don't think she ever went to be a cop to really be a cop. I think it was about opportunity and 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 um availability. I don't think I think her intention was to always be a criminal. I just think she didn't want to be a drug dealer. Yeah, I, I think can see that. Another angle. I can see that. I, can I think see it's that. another angle of dealing with, with dealing with shit or uh, whatever. And she feels as though now she's in a position of power. Which that's right. what all power is about, that she can make different moves. And we beginning to I'm getting to see that in the development as far as her character. But we're gonna get into that too later. But we know that something ultimately ends up happening to Raquel, whether it's life or death, or she goes to jail, or she decides that she and simply I think runs she off. Go, I think she's gonna go to jail. We know that something takes her out of the drug game because Ultimately, Kane ends up going to work for Breeze. So, right. Uh, at some point, we know that he no longer is is no longer a family business. Now he's now working for somebody else. So you know, mm-hmm. is how we get to that point is the, what 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 we have to see mm-hmm. develop. So you know, mm-hmm. and she may choose to uh, maybe you know we've argued with this uh, we've argued with this theory very early on in our discussions about these characters that we feel like something's going to happen to Symphony that's going to maybe trigger her to want to get out of the game 
or that's going to be a um, a uh, pivotal moment for her, just like what we've seen happen with Jukebox uh, last week. We know that whatever happened with her is pretty much setting the tone for her, what her character is going to become. So we've yet to see what's going to happen to Rock where it's going to force her out of the drug game. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. I agree with that. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. So our next character uh, we want to talk about, who's that? Uh, kind of touched on all of them a little bit. What, what do let's you get, let's, let's, dive, let's dive straight into Marvel. We got to go to Marvel a little bit deeper. All right. Mm. Let's go. We got to go to Marvel a little deeper because I like beyond, I, I want to know what made him what he is right now. How did he get to this point where he pretty much neglects whatever his daughter has going on, unless it got something to do with drugs, and we get he gets to just being just this guy? What do y'all think triggered him? Is it because that he started off doing it and then he realized that, or Raquel realized that? Nah, this key can't do it. Like, how do, how does that happen? Fast money, clout, um, and just bad decision making. Because Raquel, even though Raquel uses money to kind of make things happen for her, that brown envelope, she's not flashy with it. She's not flashy with it, so she's not flashing money all over town. You know, she's not riding around in um, bright automobiles. She's not decked out with. She got a Range Rover 4.6. But but (laughs) still, but still, it's a white Range Rover. So it's not like it's a candy apple red Mercedes, you know, that you're riding around town. You taking uh, shots at Marvin? That you're pulling. That's what that's what we're talking about. That's what it sounds like. I'm like, he got it, he got it. She got a Range Rover 4.6. So 4.6 is was a lot back then. But but it's it's a difference. It's a difference because again. It's having something nice, but it's also having something nice and being super flashy with it. He is it's, flashy. So th- that's my point. But it so comes she... to his character. I don't think so. She's a little bit more subtle. She's she's a little bit more subtle. I'm not saying that she don't use money and um, things like that to influence how she operates. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I think when we're talking about how Marvin has became what he's became, it's because of that. It's because... I want to be recognized in the streets. I want to be seen. I want to be known. You know, I got the most money. I got this. I got that. I think that is exactly why he isn't in a position of power is Mm. because he he's he's reaping the benefits in the wrong way. You're bringing a lot of attention to the organization. You're bringing a lot of attention to yourself. Whereas Rock, she she moves a little bit more subtle. She's a little bit more subtle, and a lot of her movements are behind the scenes chess um, plays. Where with Marvin, I think Marvin is he wants people to see him coming. He wants people to hear him. He wants people to know that he that man. So you want? So you say that Marvin need his name to ring? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, this is an unpopular opinion. Some people are just fuck up. Like it just, I kind of look at that just, though. Yeah, some people are think just, that's... like some people just aren't gonna be the brightest. Like everybody ain't a leader. That's the way workers. I look at it. And yeah. I just think Marvin, Marvin is a worker, but wants to be a leader. And and because he doesn't he under, just attributes. like with Canaan, he don't understand like the decisions you're making are bad decisions, and these are the reasons why. And it's like he has again, he takes no accountability. It's always somebody else's None. fault. It's yep. always an excuse or a reason. And yeah, he might have been selling drugs from the time he was like twelve. That don't mean he was a leader. He could have been a corner boy. That don't mean like like the reality is if your sister wasn't running the organization, would you be in charge of anything? No. And we know that he had an opportunity to be in charge and whether he got set up or he made a bad decision, he lost it. He went to jail and somewhere along the line, Rock took his spot. Now we don't know all of the details of that yet, but Ooh, some people I got just a theory ain't on good that. leaders. I got a theory some on people that. Just, yeah, some people just ain't good leaders. And I think Marvin just isn't a good leader. I think Marvin would be a fuck up if he was working in corporate America or the corner. I just, <laughs> he, 
I just think that could be a fact up. though, because Marvin I'm, is I mean, a, he kind of a fuck up. That might be a mean thing to say, but it just it just is. He like, just you lacks, that up again. He, he just lacks uh, leadership skills. That that's that's pretty much what I take away from that. He lacks the leadership ability, and I, I think, can agree with that. I think he lacks a lot of competition when it comes down to just. Come on now, you're gonna have Kanan in the spot after she already said you don't need to be in this. Come on now, but that wasn't his first choice. So let's give him a little bit. Let's give him a little bit. Credit. But that was his worst choice as of it date. It was his worst choice, but it was a choice out of uh, out of I have no one else turn to choice. Desperation. Yes, it was a choice. It, a man should never make a move when he's desperate. It wasn't his first choice because his first choice was to go get exactly what we needed to go get was Scrappy. Scrappy. But because Scrappy was unavailable, okay. He shouldn't have made that move because he was desperate. He shouldn't have made that move because he was desperate. He should have figured out another way. The work still had to get done. I'm not saying that his decision making was right, but I'm just saying uh, it wasn't his first thought. Even though we 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 want to blame him for taking Kanan over there, and we know that was terrible consequences for him doing that. But at the end of the day, it wasn't his his first thought. So I'll give him some credit to that. But I don't even blame him for that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean to cut you off. What well, for taking Kanan over there? Go ahead. I'll, I'll say. Go ahead. Let, let Chris finish. Ultimately, it wasn't his fault. What happened? It more so Kanan's fault. Because if he had never invited that girl over there, none of this would have happened. So it would have been a no harm, That's no foul. He should have walked, walked off down the street with. He should have walked, let her walk down. He should have even had her over there. You see her at school every goddamn day. You ain't have to invite her nowhere. Right. Or you could have went over to her house to see her. Right. But well, like but, I said, but, you could have seen her like blocks down and be like, "Hey, what's good?" You know what I'm saying? Right. That way, but just I, like nah, I wouldn't even have her in the vicinity of work. Right. The reason why I say I don't blame him for that, I wasn't saying I don't blame him for taking Kanan. I'm talking, and again, this might be, maybe I'm being too technical about this. I blame him for even how he was choosing to do it. You are, it's broad daylight. That is supposed to be the stash house. Ain't nobody supposed to be living there. You're going to pull up your candy apple Mercedes Benz in front of the house in the middle of the day and move, even if Scrap wasn't sick. And y'all are just gonna move boxes out. Now again, uh, I understand that I understand that them getting that, them getting robbed and all of that. That was that's another conversation. But I'm right. just saying, was that the best way to move the stash house? You that's see, why? Even under back the then it might have been. Back then it might have been like we no, 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 no. You see what Unique Crew did? They came in a van. They came in a white van that. You go to put produce boxes in. Ain't nobody gonna believe that you're moving produce in no candy apple red. That's a good point. Mercedes. Good point. Good you point. Came in a white van just like they did. Goes back to uh, just going with your first thoughts instead of your twenty first thought. You mm-hmm. know, you should have thought that through. You should have thought that's a that good point. That's with a good point. Multiple different scenarios besides pulling up in your whip and do that. You could have went and got a van. You could have went and used somebody else's whip. Or whatever case. Now, granted, the, right, and granted, the neighbors probably knew what was up. Like the neighbors probably weren't tripping or whatever. But mm-hmm. again, it's just the point of you just leaving. It's it, it just again, well, I, it might be nitpicky. It might be nit- but that was the first well, thing I thought of. We know the neighbors weren't tripping. Hell, they saw the police. They ain't see shit. They just heard some gunfire. Yeah, but that's and that's what I'm saying. So it wasn't even about the police necessarily. I mean, somebody necessarily calling the police, but you just never know. You got that one nosy neighbor. You just never know and. That was the first thing I thought of before they even bust down the door, before they put the gun in Kanan's head. When he pulled up in that damn Benz, that's the first thing I thought of was, that's what we doing? We're going to move the stash house in the middle of the day. With the... He didn't even go in the alley. When he dropped Kanan off, he, he don't went think. The alley. That's my whole point. I said that <laughs> earlier. I was like, he don't think, but I don't know. I, I'm not... I, I fought Marvin for a lot of shit. Like, he does... He is a wild card. Like, and the crazy part about it is, like, he's in Ballers, and he kind of got the same character in Ballers. That's the, that's the scary part. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but he's a wild card. So, I'm not trying to cut him no slack or anything like that. And I'm not saying that he's not. What I, what I can say is, he's not. I don't think he's totally at fault for the shit that happened. He's not because it kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning of this podcast. Everything that's happening right now, everything that's happening in their lives right now is because of Kanan. 
Mm-hmm. It, it, it is. It's all because of Canaan. So I feel like things would have been done a little bit differently had mm-hmm. the circumstances that Canaan brought on everyone unfolded differently. Mm-hmm. Because we can see that in we can see that with Tommy. Tommy did the same thing in power. Tommy made some very stupid decisions and very stupid mm-hmm. movements. It wasn't toward, it wasn't until towards the end of power that he started coming up with better plans and schemes yep. that that panned out. But because his irrationality of things and not thinking them through kind of forced him, and I think we're going to see a lot of that in force. I think we're going to see a lot of that that evolve with him in force. Is that Ghost is no longer around? Ghost is dead. So now you're going to have to move a little bit differently. You're probably going to have to move some of the ways that Ghost was moving that you didn't agree with because now you got to be a step ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, we know that Marvin is Marvin is a bit of a problem in itself. Wild card. Um, no, think offense, he, no offense, Juggernaut. Man, look, I, I don't know why they named that nigga Marvin. I think that we've seen enough of Lulu's character to uh, to feel comfortable with the fact that he's a little bit more level-headed, more rational. But at the same time, we also can probably assume that he doesn't want to do this. This is what Marvin wants to do. This is Marvin's life. You know, that's all he knows. That's all he knows. With, with Lulu, he has an option. He has something else that he's, he's vested in that Marvin isn't. But Marvin is vested in being a street dude. That's, that's right. all he knows. That's all he wants to be. Same thing with Kanan. That's all Kanan wants. Kanan wants, even in power, that's his ultimate goal. Jukebox was trying to tell him, look, get this money. And, you know, but he was more content with being the cadet. He wanted to be the drug. He wanted to be the man in the street still. Like, how do you not evolve from that? How do you not evolve from being the man in the streets to the man that's on the penthouse, you know, uh, low expectations for themselves. And I think that's what we have with Kanan's character. He has a low expectation for himself. Uh, uh, Marvin has a low expectation for himself. And I, I don't know what Raquel's end all goal is. Um, doesn't seem like she wants to make this a lifelong career thing for her. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see where she decides enough is enough and move forward. Right. Um, I mean, I... <clears throat> go ahead. I'm sorry. Box at even at a young age that she's at right now, she has a goal. She has goals and higher expectations for herself. She wants. She has aspirations to have a, a career in music as a singer. You know we kind of know why that's not going to work out. But, you know, I, I just, I don't see what the the goals are for some of the characters. You know, I think uh, Detective Howard's goal is ultimately to survive. He wants to live a little longer. Uh, even though we think that he may be resolved with dying, ultimately he doesn't want to die. He kind of wants to be the man in the streets on the law enforcement side. So I think he wants to live a little, a little while longer. Uh, you know, I think Symphony's goal is to ultimately get his master's and, you know, find love with Raquel. Hmm. Um, and that might be her end all goal as well. You know, a happy ever after story for her. You know, ultimately, she didn't want her child to be a part of the family business, even though she didn't do such a good job keeping him out of it. Horrible job. She did a horrible job at that. But at the same time, she kind of had no choice. You know, because all the dudes that she was with was a part of the life and they left. Sound and, like Tasha, huh? Well, uh, Raquel didn't have no choice. Tasha had choices. Raquel didn't have no choice at all because, you know, Def Con got locked up and um, High Post. went away. High Post got killed. Yeah. So, you know, and she had a small child that she had to take care of. And this, this is all she knew was the street life, you know? So she had no choice but to maintain and keep that momentum going in order for her and her son to survive. Question from one of our fans, actually. Do y'all think that Howard has something to do with high post getting killed? I don't. I think uh, Unique did. Hmm. I think Unique absolutely has something to do with him getting killed. Explain how. Uh, well, we we hear them say that high post got killed for being a snitch. 
So who else would he have been snitching on? Unique's uh, crew. I so mean, Unique's brother went to jail. High Post got killed. So I, I just. But it's kind of like one of them things. Like it was kind of like one of them things. Like you know, Detective Howard's like only give you one king, and that's gonna lead to my next question from one of our listeners. Do y'all think that Howard, Detective Howard, is gonna change his mind about it only being one king and a king being unique now that he discovered, or he feels as though he discovered what he discovered? Yes. Hmm. I don't know. Elaborate on that, CP. Why I you don't, don't know? Because I'm, 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 I stop because it retro. I, I because I think Howard has a very again his beef with Raquel is personal, and so him not wanting her to be in like his reason for not wanting her to see her win may not be about hatred it may be about love it may be i want you out the streets because i know that only ends one of two ways you know what i'm saying i don't know well i don't, I don't think I don't that know. they had this 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 you broke my heart and left me uh type relationship because uh, there was yeah, only, i don't think that either I, I, there was only a year difference between uh defcon getting locked up and her starting to fuck around or fucking around with detective power around the same time so Mm -hmm. it could have been a situation where he wasn't in law enforcement he may be from the streets himself he may be another jukebox right but i I, but i disagree that it i disagree that it doesn't necessarily mean it's about love Hmm. i don't know just that's uh, my, my answer was i don't know because in my mind their relationship may be more complicated and so I definitely I don't think know. that there is complicated. We see that right now, just with the timeline of you know her uh, DefCon getting locked up and her getting pregnant by him. We already know that they're right. They're, this they're, situation might have been a love triangle all the way going back. Like they might have grew up together. Could have been. And you know what I'm saying. I mean, I, again, I know I'm reading a lot into it. I'm just saying I don't. You know, I don't know. I don't nah, know. read into it because I'm trying to figure it out my damn self. I'm I, trying to. I definitely think that there is. Uh, he may have feelings for Raquel that uh, that are probably not reciprocated on her end. You know, uh, we we have to learn a little bit more of that backstory in order it's for us to really something. come to a conclusion. On I don't think we've seen enough. I don't think we've seen enough of their backstory for us to to have an opinion either way. But I do think that he's ultimately going to support Raquel's efforts uh, and, uh, as opposed to Unique's. Especially because his son is wrapped up in all of this. And, and he can they might possibly have the same blood type. Exactly. So we he's talk, motivated, he's motivated, alter, he's, a, he's motivated to support her now out of personal gain. So, mm-hmm. Are we speaking on ulterior motives? Possibly, possibly with Detective Howard, it's definitely an ulterior motive with him. He he doesn't strike me as uh, I, I do <laughs> the best John type. My <laughs> yeah, guy. nah, he's definitely not the honest John type. <laughs> yeah, he's not the honest John type. Right. So it's definitely for personal gain. Yeah, he's definitely an asshole that's trying to figure out how to maneuver through life. But like again, I said earlier, but then again, trying to like out a way to stay here a, a, a day longer. But he like when he's in that office, he's kind of like. All right, it is what it is. This was prior to him finding out. I think he had came to resolve with the fact that when the family members' blood type test came back and the family and it confirmed that they weren't a match, mm-hmm. I think he made peace in that moment. But now there's hope. You know, when there's hope, <laughs> you that know, life that changes raft, that things. Life he see floating. The, the dynamics totally when there's hope. At that moment, he didn't have hope. You know, he was going on a donor list. So mm-hmm. you know, at that point, you know, I've come to the conclusion that what it's, either they're going to find me a donor or they're not. Now there's hope. There's a glimmer of hope. And now I got to make sure that this comes to fruition for my own personal benefit. Well, I don't know. His character is interested too, especially it just turned a little bit more interested in me because the way the thing unfolded. With Canaan possibly, possibly being his son, and I said possibly being his son, not a guarantee. It's possibly because he asked the question. He didn't say, "Well, this is my son," 
or oh, whatever, because he looked at the DNA or whatever. He absolutely sure. did say that to her, and she didn't deny it. No, I she didn't he, deny I, it. I thought he said, I thought he asked her, like, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought he asked her, like, is this my son? No, no he, he was said, like, Kanan is my both son. Know Kanan yeah, he was like, Kanan is my son. And oh. she didn't deny it. She didn't deny it. She right, didn't she deny just it. said, stay, she just she said, said, stay, stay away, away from, from my, my son. Yep. Okay, all right. Yep. Yeah, she I didn't try to even little... sidestep out of it. To be quite honest with you, she didn't even try to sidestep part. out of it. All she right. knew that he had don't figure it out. Okay. Because oh, yeah. he had like, figured it out even before anything else when, when he found out that boy was born in 1975. And he was like, I thought you was a year older. So he had already knew and had suspicions about this even before because you instantly see Kanan say, why do you care? Because for him to say, I thought you were a year older, meaning that there had already been some thoughts that this could possibly be my son. Mm. And she she put those to rest when she said, no, he was born in 76. Mm-hmm. But when he found out he was born in 75, that just kind of mm-hmm. reconfirmed what he had already uh, done. Right. Okay. Like, All right. Oh, All right. okay like, cool. oh, you're not DevCon's boy, huh? Yeah, because he instantly looked it up to see what year and uh, you know what month Def Con got locked up. He had put the story, he had put the timeline together even before he going over there to talk to Raquel. When he went over there, right. it was going over there to tell her, I know. It, it wasn't to question her about it. He went over there to tell her, look, I know what you've been hiding from me. You know, so that's going to change the dynamics mm. to me, I feel like. Uh, that's going to change the dynamics on how those two interact going forward. Definitely. Because she's going to try to keep this a secret, and he's going to want to exploit her with this to get the, that bone marrow. A good prediction. <laughs> I like it. Okay, my last one is um, jukebox. W- what do you think we're going to see happen with jukebox? Turn to the at the moment, she's probably my favorite character besides Lulu. I think I think she's broken, and she's gonna turn into a savage. She is broken, but I think that's th- this. This is definitely feeding what's gonna turn her into the savage. I don't think this is exactly what's gonna turn her into savage. When Marvin finds out and rejects her and puts her out, that's what's gonna tip her over the edge. When huh. when her when her own father disowns her and doesn't support her, she's already she's already received this from. Uh, Nicole's parent rejection and the hurt when she gets that rejection and that hurt from her own father, that's what's going to tip her over. I think she already kind of rejected, you know, and hurt from her own father. I think she already kind of like know that her father is not going to accept it. I think was part of it's going to turn into a savage. Um, I think her father has some idea. Uh, maybe she don't. Maybe he. Maybe she. I don't does. think he, maybe does. he doesn't. Marvin. Marvin lives in a world of himself. He don't mm-hmm. think of her now. But you know, he don't think but, about her well being now. It's just but like I think Kanan, I think I think Kanan gonna drop that bomb he gives on her. Kanan a ride before he offered his own daughter a ride. Marvin has no 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 conscientious thought process of the fact that he is a parent and her well being. I, I can see Kanan and Marvin. I can see I'm not Kanan and Marvin. I can see jukebox and Kanan talking about it, and then Marvin find out about it. You know, just by eavesdropping or. You know, Kane is saying something about it because Kane is just messy right now. You know, I, I can see, I can see something like that. You know, but like, I, I don't know. But I think they, I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna link back together and be back cool once they find out that old girl was the one that gave up the stash. I do think that Kane is gonna be the one to kill her, but I think that Jukebox is gonna be the one that opened his eyes up to the reasons why. She the one to get up the stash, and that's how they get. That's how they get back tight. They gonna get back right. I don't okay. think it's gonna be. Ju- I don't think it's gonna be Jukebox that's gonna tell Kanan Me that it's old girl. I think it's gonna be Scrap after he gets information from infiltrating Unique. He's gonna take that back. Agree. He's gonna find out, and I hmm. think he's gonna Agreed. take it back to Rock. And that's how I, because he she already tried to talk to him, and he didn't believe her. He didn't want to hear it. Right. So that's unless, something is closed with them. Yep. Yeah, and unless he, unless she brings back some sort of like, mind, like oh. he threatened her too. So, right. So I don't think that I don't think I mean they're gonna get back right, but I don't think that's what's gonna be it. I think Scrap I is gonna be the one to take that back to the family and say, This is how they found out. Mm-hmm. I agree. 
I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. That's going to be one of Scrap's first things that he, if not the only thing he's able to report back to uh, the family is that he's going to be in the presence of a conversation about that girl giving up that stash house. Mm -hmm. He's definitely going to take that back to rock. What's going to confirm it is that lady at the uh, gas station, that lady at the uh, bodega. Mm. He's going to, she's going to confirm it because there was a reason why they let her overhear that. And you saw it when she was there at the counter. She was definitely paying attention. They made a point to show us that she was paying attention to that conversation. Mean right. that's gonna come back. So speaking that's of the part bits, I wanna see. I wanna I see how that, that whole I wanna see how that whole situation at the bodega plays uh, out because she is important. I don't know how she is important, important, but she, she is important. And I can see role. how that plays out. We already said it, CP. We already said it. I'm telling you what's gonna end up happening is that woman is looking at Raquel right now in admiration. She is woman phenomenal. She's phenomenal. Mm. Woman. I'm woman. That's me. <laughs> That's exactly what she is to her. Okay. She see how she stand up to her brothers. She see how she move in the streets. And most importantly, she see how she move with her husband. Yeah. She is going to give that lady the courage to either get rid of that husband, set that husband up. That lady is going to be very important to that story. And that's going to become Rock's business partner. They're going, to, they're going to be in cahoots together. They're going to build this team woman unity against these unique crew and, and anybody else that come up against them. Her business is going to be a very important part of washing her money. Because remember I had said that earlier, you know, we hadn't seen up until this point how their money gets clean. You know, I don't know if that was such right. a big deal back in the 90s about washing and cleaning money. But her now having that storefront and Raquel making that comment about this is my business now, that is definitely gonna be their business. And they're gonna definitely. do they're definitely gonna do some big things together. And her running that business out of the apartments, I think that lady gonna be all intertwined in the family business now. After so, they get rid of that husband. So they get rid of the husband and they start running things out of the bodega. Or whatever. So the bodega is just going to be the stash. What y'all think they're going to do with the two apartments? Like, do y'all think anything's going to happen with the two apartments? They're going to move their dope. So, I mean, do y'all think, like, how did, like, what do y'all predict beyond just moving their dope or whatever? It seems like something got to happen. They, they, they pretty much doing the Carter. They're fortifying themselves in these apartments. They're fortifying themselves where they're, remember, they keep saying that they don't have soldiers. Right, you know, they don't. They don't have enough soldiers to go fight Unique uh, for the corners. So until they can eliminate Unique and um, and get those corners back for him, they're fortifying themselves in these in the bodega. They're fortifying themselves. I don't in think these Rock apartments. personally. I don't think Rock personally want the corners back. That's what I was gonna say. I don't think her goal is to get the corners back. I, I think her goal, goal is, is to, to move, move them the off. To the move. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. She wants to. She wants to ascend. She wants to evolve from just selling drugs in the streets. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I definitely feel as though the apartment situation is just going to be how they operate going forward. You know, uh, less risk to them. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean the the woman in the bodega. Like I think that's going to be an important part. I don't know if she ends up. I don't know if I'm going to go so far as I say I think she's going to end up being Raquel's like partner. I think. But I do think that she's going to be important in what happens at the bodega and, and getting information to Raquel. I think she's going to be a part of the organization. I don't know about her partner, though. Well, I don't mean that as in a full-fledged partnership or whatever the case. Like what I'm mostly mean by that, yeah, <laughs> is that she's going to be a, a very big ally to them because yeah, yeah. Oh, just, I like agree she, with that. yeah. Just, just like she's getting information from her own kids right now that don't even know <laughs> that She's part of the organization. She's going to hear other things in the streets as well as people come in and out at store. And she's going to feed that information to the family, whether it's uh, people that they try to get at, uh, movement that's happening, things that are happening in the street. Mm -hmm. She's going to be their eyes and ears, so to speak. And she's going to feed any information that comes into that bodega that's relevant to Raquel's business. She's going to get that information back to her. Quick, fast, yeah. and hurt. Yeah, I think that's the way it's going to go down. Yeah, Definitely. okay, yeah. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. She's going to be the eyes in the street. Most definitely. Um, I, 
I just I, I just I can't figure out what they're going to do with Famous's character. Uh, we know that uh, I, I don't see how close Famous and um, Kanan are. I don't really like Famous. I don't like him either. I don't like his character either. But to me, it's an Easter egg there because we're we're assuming that Kanan named his son Sean after Famous, right? But that may or may not be the case because I, mean, I I just don't see this close knit relationship that they have. I don't see this close friendship they had. To me, he seemed more closer to D Wiz than he does Famous. I, so, I think because of the, I think because I think it depends on. The circumstances. I think, like, when it came out to the streets, then yeah, he was close to the, the Wiz. But I think, like, other shit, he was close lifelong to friend. We don't grow yeah. up together. He yeah. always been around my family. Yeah, exactly. Like, famous goes out to eat with him. Like, he knows they move on Wednesdays and shit like that. And I think D Wiz just kind of like, if we on it, I go to D Wiz because we on it like that. I can see that. You know, I but I don't. That. I don't really like. I don't really like famous at all. I say I dislike his character. I think he plays a role, but as far as I don't like him. So, <laughs> what do we think Lulu is going over here to talk to Unique about? Do you think that's just uh, Raquel making another movement, another chess piece? Is she just making another uh, uh, chess piece to try to get Unique's guard down? Because Lulu's going to go over there and ask him for a favor. And we saw him tell Jukebox that, you know, you shouldn't accept favors. You shouldn't ask favors for people because that's just giving them ammunition to keep their thumb on you. So what do you think she's sending him over there for? She's going to ask Lulu for a favor? Uh, I mean, Lulu going over there to ask for a favor? Yep. That must have been in the previews. I must have missed that part. Yeah, you missed the previews for next week's episode. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so I watched like it, watch, watch it at 12 o'clock. I will see the previews. Be another uh, turn up episode because we see the concert, we see the little uh, what they were putting together, the little showcase, the little artist showcase where right. famous and jukebox uh, are going to go to the little show, whatever they're gonna do the little art, the little showcase event. Uh, what's his name is going over there to talk to Unique, and I can't see what relevant conversation he could have going over there to talk to Unique at any so, point. There's nothing to talk about. So to me, I feel like that's Raquel moving. But that is my but that just might be Lily and Lulu being diplomatic. I think Lulu was probably the most diplomatic out of all of them. So you think he might be trying to settle down some of this? Yeah, this, to settle this down. Stuff so that's going ain't, on. So, so we ain't gotta move. Like he's trying to get his business off the ground as far as the uh being respected as an artist or a producer or whatever it is that he's doing. He might be like, yo, you know, you settle down this way. If you stop, if you if you stop your dogs from barking, I can stop my dogs from barking, and we can continue on with business. I can see mm-hmm. that. I can see that. So it, it might be one of those type of conversations, you know. But shit, you never know. All right. Well, I guess we'll see how all that unfolds next week. Can't wait. This will be a dope show. Um, I was kind of disappointed because I was like. I told people I was like, oh, I think it's a break, you know, into the into power this 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 season. I didn't see anything that indicated a break, but yeah, because normally they'll tell you when there's a break. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I woke up this morning, you especially know, with the, the 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 other shows that are getting ready to come out and um, how they're coming out so quickly. I didn't think that it would do a break uh, between seasons because you know what we got BMF after this, yeah, and then book two. Yep. And then I guess we're mm-hmm. rolling into force. And I didn't think it was going to be a break because I'm just like, well, they didn't say anything about it being a break. They said nothing. Mm-hmm. So and you I know, was like, well, one thing I've noticed about Star- Stars is they don't have, like, their series, their shows, they don't have more than one airing at the same time. You know, usually it's one and done. It's just like when Pete Valley was on, there was nothing on for power. Like, they don't like their shows to compete with each other. So normally they don't have two two shows that they expect to have uh, mm-hmm. a large viewer viewers from airing at the same time. It's usually one, and um you um when that one goes on a break, then another one comes out, you know type deal. So it's gonna be interesting to see how they keep all this power universe going, 
and then you know what they're going to do with P Valley, how P Valley is going to fit into all that as well. But even though P Valley may have its own fan base that's kind of outside of the Power Universe, mm-hmm. but I do feel like yeah. just like with us, we watch P Valley. I feel like some of the people that watch Power is going to watch P Valley. I'm ready to see the paint. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to, to see the paint. Yeah, I'm ready to see. I'll I'm bet ready. y'all are. I'm, I'm ready to see. Are. I'm ready to see autumn. Oh my god. Oh, oh Lord. God. Here we go. Here we go. I can't we wait go. to see it. You're talking about Miss Mississippi? It's been a long time. No, no, he wants to see Autumn. He wants to see Autumn. No, Retro wants to see Mississippi. I did want to see yeah. Mississippi until she did a diamond roll. So I, we on a break right now. Yeah, but Mississippi I think, on a break I think right she right wanna, now. Oh, I think Lord, she, not on a break. Yeah, we on a break right wanna, now. I really think she want to kill that dude. I think she want to kill Derek herself, though. When is that? Derek might be dead already. What are you talking about? We'll <laughs> get into that. D- Derek, we gotta get save that. that stage. We gotta save that. <laughs> right, we gotta save that. For we're gonna say that. <laughs> we're gonna say that. God another we'll show get to another that. day. All right, so we got anything else to talk about on book uh, book three tonight? Uh, no, no, sir. I think we covered them. Mm-hmm. We covered a lot. Yeah. So I guess we will go ahead and wrap up this week's episode. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, as always, we appreciate you guys listening. And uh, trust me, we love to hear your feedback and your thoughts and your suggestions. And of course, if anyone's out there that's listening, wants to be part of our show, please hit us up. You can send us a DM on, on Instagram at TSF Entertainment. You can also send us an email at info at TSF dot com. Uh, you can find me on social media at Retro CG on Instagram. You can find me, uh, Really BTV, on YouTube or on Instagram and Twitter at Really BTV underscore on YouTube. And you can find me, your boy, Juggernaut of Souls, on Instagram at Juggernaut underscore of underscore souls or YouTube at just Juggernaut space of souls. And go make sure you go check out that new video, the Jordan 12 utilities that I just laid down today. We got more content coming soon. You can find me in St. Louis way where the gun play rain all day. No, but it's a real shit. That's <laughs> 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 a real shit. Oh, 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 a real shit. Um, you can find me around, man. I'm Jack of Jordans. Um, actually, I just talked to uh. I actually just got word from one of our other uh, 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 brothers of the of the soul firm that we actually are putting something out this coming Thursday. We're gonna do this uh, this Rockefeller documentary. We're gonna re- we're gonna recap that. It's something that somebody had dropped on YouTube. We're gonna recap that. We're gonna get into that, and um, we're gonna see how y'all we're gonna see we're gonna see how y'all like it, man. Like I just got word from her earlier, probably like an hour ago. We're gonna recap that. We're gonna get into that, but um. Yeah, Jack and Jordan's. You can find me outside. You can find me in your house. You can find me definitely on the podcast whenever you need me. Holla at me. <laughs> we that see y'all real soccerish. I know, right? And it I'm does, soccer. and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all. We see y'all next week. <laughs> Holla. Right. Holla. Yeah. So if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app and go to Anchor FM to get started. You are now listening to TSF Entertainment Podcast.